Alright guys and gals, this is a long plane review for Spooky Castle on the Amstrad CPC, released by Atlantis Software in 1990. And this is just a little budget game that we came across on last week's Amstream, which I like the look of from the box art that, if I'd seen this as a kid say on the uh, shelves of WH Smith's, I probably would have spent my pocket money on purely based on that alone. And when we loaded it up, despite initially being put off by its difficulty, I grew to kind of like it and wanted to see more of this little budgie game. So here we are with the long play and this is a short little filler video really whilst the bigger long plane review vids get finished off because they've been delayed whilst I wait for some people to get back to me. So sorry about the wait for the new vids on the channel. Hopefully this will suffice for a short bit. Back of the box quickly. Deep in the heart of Spooky Castle, the beautiful Princess Claire has been imprisoned by evil ghosts. King Michael has promised her hand in marriage to anyone who can save her. So you, Gormless Gary, a peasant of limited intelligence, have volunteered to undertake this dangerous task. 17 screens of arcade action. Wow. So yeah, it's quite a short game, but even the back of the box Bizarrely proudly proclaiming 17 screens of arcade action like that's a good thing and a boast. That's not many. Wow. Hmm. Anyway, let's get into it. Now, as mentioned earlier, this was released by Atlantis, a small London-based games publisher of budget games who lasted from about 1984 to 1992. Uh, they started doing Amstrad games in 1986 and only released about 25-ish CPC games. Their most memorable ones probably being Cave Mania, Moon Talk, Hobgoblin, a Naf Ghost and Goblins clone. But I do remember Skating USA and especially Super Kid being really great fun. Now, in terms of Spooky Castle, the Atari 8-bit version was the original, released in 1988, created by Roy York and Brian Isson, which you'll see on the title screen here. And then it was converted two years later in 1990. Not sure why, because the Atari version was pretty terrible, which we'll see later. And it was converted to the Amstrad CPC, ZX Spectrum and Commodore 64. And all three conversions were done by the same two people. Converted and coded by Rue, which is an alias of Andrew Bowen. He also did two other Amstrad games for Atlantis, Periscope Up. Think Airwolf in a Submarine, yikes, and Crack Up, a Breakout Arkanoid style clone. But that's all his Amstrad games I could find. And then graphics by Chris Edwards, who's done lots of Amstrad work, mostly for Atlantis, for games like Cave Mania, Hobgoblin, Moon Talk, Skating USA, etc. But also Gemini Wing, the arcade coin up conversion for Virgin Games. And as mentioned earlier, we'll see all the other versions of Spooky Castle for the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64 and the Atari 800XL after the Amstrad Long Play and Review. But anyway, let's get the Amstrad Long Play started up now and off we go. Ooh, look at these lovely colourful graphics and a nice use of the Amstrad's blues and purples there. Used to great effect. A nice splash of orange, yellow on the screen there as well. A few, a few simple sound effects and watch out for the blue ghosts and the orange bats. I'm already on screen three here. So collect the keys to open the doors. Potions there to restore your health and crosses will give you an extra life. So you could have gone in the room at the top there and actually spammed going in that room to keep collecting lives over and over and over if you're clever and quick. But the bats will continuously drain your health. So just moving on. Now, as I remember, we're going to go very, very quickly through this because there's only 17 screens. Now, the ghosts are one hit kills in instant death, whereas the, uh, the bats will just drain your health. You can see your health bar in the bottom right corner of the uh, the heads up display at the bottom there. And the bottom left of the display there, you've got um, crosses for lives. Got three lives at the moment. And then to the right of that is the number of keys you've collected. 
And the sprites move, move about the screen very, very uh, nicely and smoothly. A little bit of slowdown at times, but only a touch. Otherwise, things move about really nicely and smoothly. Uh, a little bit of colour clash as the sprites move uh, across sort of background objects and other sprites. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter too much. No music in game though, which is a shame. Otherwise, it would have added a nice bit of atmosphere. But it does move about quite na nice and speedy. What is that in the bottom middle of the heads up display though? Uh, and the bottom middle of the screen. I honestly thought I had a corrupted dump of the game. So I loaded up the proper cassette dump of the game to check and it was the same there. On closer inspection and comparing it to the other versions, it's a knight's grave. The top half is a knight laying down holding a sword. Right. Bloody hell. We're already near the end of the game. <laughs> We're getting very close to the end. Um, It is bloody hard. And very, very frustrating. I'm making this look very, very easy. And trust me, this is a quite a difficult game. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to go. What, what can I commentate here? It's all moving very, very fast and quickly. Follow my routes for the game. Sometimes you want to go for the top door or the bottom door. But I guess you can see for yourselves. Uh, some will lead to another door, with a uh, blocked room, which might give you a health restore or an extra life. Then you have to backtrack by picking the key up and go back into the previous room. Um, as you can see there, I'm just utilising the ladder there. Sometimes a bat will come down from the top. And it will be coming down where the ladder is. So, I have to judge. Uh, there's a bug sometimes where you jump back onto the top of the ladder and you get stuck in the ladder. Which is an annoying game-breaking bug. Oh, this is the final screen. Look, there's the Princess Claire. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the game. <laughs> you have completed Spooky Castle. Congratulations, you have rescued Princess Claire from the clutches of the evil ghosts. Upon seeing his daughter return home safely, King Michael knights you and offers his daughter's hand in marriage. You gladly accept. Well done, Sir Gary. <laughs> well, there you go. That is it. As for magazine reviews, well, uh, this was never reviewed by Amstrad Action Magazine, sadly, so I can't give any scores for that. As for my score and my review, well, this is a cheap and cheerful budget game compared to a lot of the dross that was pumped out at the time by the likes of Alternative and Mastertronic. This is definitely a small cut above them and not too bad for £2.99 in 1990. I think the graphics are lovely, bright and colourful with nice use of colours. It controls well and responsive for a platformer and is fast, which is important for a game of this type. It's just a shame the sound effects are rather lacking and there's no music. And of course, it's far too short. Uh, most people though will find it prohibitively hard and will find themselves reaching for the off switch within the first few minutes after getting wrecked repeatedly within the first screen or two. But persevere and figure out the timings and your positioning within the levels and screens and it will eventually click. You'll see how I've progressed here. Uh, just like on the live stream when I play this, I initially thought, oh god this is terrible but I soon swung around. And here I am, almost liking this. Um, it's this hard because the game is this short. 17 blooming screens. So there's not much longevity. Though the absolute maximum score I can give this is probably like a six and a half out of 10. But there's also some bugs in the game, like don't jump on top of a ladder or you'll get stuck. So. I'll give this a 6 out of 10, or a 60% score overall. Just showing you some uh, scenes there of how you die in the game. But let's move on to the other versions. And there were three other versions of Spooky Castle, and we begin with the original. On the Atari 8-bit, we're playing the 800XL version here. Begins with a horrible beep. <laughs> and we have to unpause the game. And... Yeah, that is a dreadful main sprite. Otherwise, it kind of looks okay, but it's got some horrible collision detection, and you can't stand above the ghost there like you can on the um, other other versions. But um, you seem to randomly die in midair there. What is going on there? 
What killed me? Um, the ghost didn't kill me. The flame pot didn't kill me. The bat didn't kill me. What is going on? That is really strange. What What is going on there? Well, if you didn't like the Amstrad version, just try the original from which it spawned. Jeez. <laughs> You'll definitely hate this. Um, well, yeah, that main sprite is hideous and the collision detection is completely broken. Yeah, just watch what happens at the start here. Um, and it's even tougher. I mean, possibly with patience um, and practice. Just like the Amstrad version, you'll be able to progress. I mean, I eventually begin to progress a bit here. But it's uh, definitely less fun. Um, okay, I think we may be able to get a bit of progress here. I think we're about to complete the first screen. Yay! Right, okay. We've got some animation on the flames there, which is nice. Okay, off we go. Got the key. If he again in the collision detection, I think maybe. Hmm. Don't know. I like the shh noise that the Atari always likes to do. Or at least you die on the um, flames there on the uh, torches in the background. On the other versions, you can jump right through the flaming torches, but the other flames on the floor actually kill you. Uh, at least the Atari version is consistent there with the flames. <laughs> um. Fair enough. Anyway, a um, little bit inconsistent on the damage from the bat. At least it took some damage there. Other times the bats don't seem to hurt you sometimes. But anyway, but there you go. The Atari version, pretty dreadful. Um, and you wonder why um, Atlantis picked this for conversion to the other systems two years later. But there you go. Let's move on to the uh, Commodore 64 version. Now, this version is probably most similar to the Amstrad CPC port. I mean, it's practically identical, apart from maybe less vibrant colours. And there's a uh, foot foot noise as uh, Gorm's Gary walks about. And the flames are animated, which is a nice touch, just like on the Atari original version. But, oh, there's one huge important difference. Two ghosts spawn instead of one. Look, there they are. Which makes this practically bloody impossible. How are you supposed to jump over two of those ghosts at the same time when they're so close together? Those two there, maybe, but when they're slightly apart from each other, your jump isn't long enough to jump over both at the same time. That may be there. They're far enough apart to maybe do a, like a double jump. And maybe there. Yeah, maybe there. You could maybe jump out and do a double jump. But that, that would, that would be impossible to jump over both of them. Mm, no, no chance jumping over those two together if you're on the bottom floor. Climbing up a ladder and waiting for them to sort of pass underneath you. Yes. But, how are you supposed to jump over both of them there? On there! Absolutely impossible. I think the uh, Amstrad version wins out here. So, very disappointing in the Commodore 64 version. Let's move on. ZX Spectrum. Okay, this is a little different in terms of its um, screen layout. Yes. It's in a different aspect ratio, being less wide and instead taller. So everything is more squished in and compacted. Not sure why that was done. Hmm. Makes some jumps and timings a little bit tougher. Yeah. Um. See, I'm trying to jump over the uh, pot there because I want to pick up the uh, pot to restore my energy on the way back. And you'll see it again shortly. Um, 
<laughs> instead, I'm jump. I'm, instead, I'm. I, I I end up jumping into the flames at the bottom there, which are not animated on this version. Neither neither are they on the Amstrad one, sadly. But um, anyway. By the way, the torches don't kill you if you jump into the torches. So I'm jumping into the flames by accident. <laughs> um. So I'm gonna have to move away from the ladder. Uh, so I can jump over the pot there, and then jump over the flames at the bottom. Um, but yeah, uh, otherwise it's a decent conversion that plays as fast, if not maybe a little bit faster, I don't know, and as smooth as the Amstrad and Commodore 64 versions, and is uh, very colourful for the specy. I think I just prefer the look and the wider plane area of the Amstrad and Commodore 64 uh, versions, but... The Amstrad version was better than the Commodore 64 one because he only spawns one ghost, not two. So, I don't know. I think overall... Oh, God, it sounds like I'm really biased here because everyone knows I'm the Amstrad man on YouTube. I think the Amstrad version wins out, but it's kind of a bit of a hollow victory because I think, I think overall Spooky Castle is not a, the, the best game in the world. So yeah, it's a bit of a hollow victory if I say the Amstrad version I think is my preferred version. <laughs> um, but yeah. Actually, I think all the versions done by Rue, aka um, Andrew Bowen, I think the Amstrad version is slightly the better one. But it's not by much. Uh, but they're all good. I think all the versions by Rue are all actually pretty good. But there you go. So that was the specy one. And not bad, not bad. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That was Spooky Castle uh, on all the 8-bit systems there. No other versions I could find. There you go, Spooky Castle. So yeah, um, the Amstrad version got 60% from me overall. And there you go, nice fun little video there for you today. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very, very much for watching. And uh, consider supporting me on Patreon and joining the Am Squad if you want to. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thanks for watching and goodbye. Bye. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho out. <laughs>